to the moment we've all been waiting for. We're gonna try putting in a window. Been looking forward to this and a little scary, but we're gonna jump right in. Only so much you can do. We'll make some cuts, probably start with a drill and we'll drill a few holes around the outline of the window from the inside. Then we'll take the jigsaw on the outside and we'll connect the dots, pop the piece of metal out, slap a window in there and see if it fits. If it doesn't, you know, we'll cry a little bit and regroup and see, see what the heck we're gonna do. It should fit because we measured it twice, right? I hope you did. <laughs> so we're gonna start from square one and see if we get this done right the first time. Don't know what the heck we're doing, but we'll see what happens. So just gonna take a marker and try to outline the inside perimeter, and trace the inside perimeter on the metal, on the inside, so that I can know where to drill my holes. And if anything, I'm gonna end up a little bit, I'm gonna leave a little extra meat on the edges, so I'll, I'll make this a little bit smaller of a cutout if necessary, because you could always take more material off. You can't put more material on, so. I'd rather cut twice than screw it up once really bad. So, let's do a little trace. Of course, you could always take a big piece of cardboard and trace out the window, but we don't have a big piece of cardboard and I'm not gonna fart around with that for now. So, let's make a hole. There's no going back. There's one hole. So, it's pretty thick metal, uh, 16 gauge. As we learned, we should have gone a little thinner than that, but not gonna hurt anything, it's good metal. Yeah. Well, that might have been the ugliest cut I could have ever made. So it's only uphill from here. <laughs> or downhill, whatever. At least we didn't take too much off. Nice and wavy, you know. Beautiful. From here, we'll kind of smooth out some of the edges, take a file to some of it. Obviously left way too much on this side. Um, yeah, missed a lot of the holes. So you think these things are for, uh, just for a fashion statement? No, these Coke bottles are because I am really blind. And I think I proved that here today. So no one can say otherwise. <laughs> Don't know how they give me a driver's license. Anyhow, let's get this puppy cleaned up and see if the window fits. <laughs> Live and learn. I made some mistakes. <laughs> we know for the other nine windows what not to do. Quick learner, so good to learn on the first one. What mistake did we make? I make? <laughs> I, was, I was holding the tool. Well, cut too much material off. Exactly what I said I didn't want to do. The whole thing about making a little outline with cardboard of the window radius, the perimeter of the window, all that. Oh yeah, way better than that, don't need to do it. Well, sometimes <laughs> it just doesn't work out that way. So on the next windows, what we'll probably end up doing, being that they're all identical, is taking a piece of our foam, our rigid foam board, 
make a mock window and we'll trace the outline of that exactly in the space that we have for the window on the inside and then we'll make more holes with the drill around the perimeter of that so it's easier to follow. It's hard when you're connecting the dots and you've got six inches or more space and you know the jigsaw is just kind of getting wavy going all over the place. The more holes we have, the more dots we have to connect, the easier it's going to be to get from one to the other in, in a straight line. So we'll take a little bit more time, take a deep breath, and jump into those other windows knowing what we need to do to make it turn out right. This one will still work, it's not going to be too much of a pain. Having the window centered, uh, this corner, there's a little bit too much taken out. We're talking maybe an eighth of an inch. That is kind of a lot because that means the putty tape's not going to have anything to contact behind the rim of the window. So we'll have to take a little bit more time, maybe put some spray foam in there, and then go over it with some Bondo or something to give it a solid surface. So we want to make sure that it doesn't look like crap from the outside, obviously. And even more important, we don't want water coming in. On the topic of water, we have the galvanized sheet metal on the outside, and galvanized sheet metal is great, but obviously when you cut it, you now have an edge that's not galvanized, so it doesn't have that zinc coating. We want to make sure that we spray that with primer or something to cover it up, because that is an area we can develop some rust, and that rust can spread. So we're going to go over the edge really quick of the metal, and also get any nicks on the window frame from the saw blade so that we at least cover the bare metal. We've got some putty tape, actually, right here. We've got a lot of putty tape. This is just one of our many rolls. If you watched our video where we installed the Fantastic Vents, which is a great video, by the way, you should go check it out <laughs> if you haven't seen it. This stuff just goes around the perimeter. Not much to it. It, uh, it kind of flows. Um, it, it, it's pliable, so it gives us a watertight bond between the window frame and the wall of the bus. And we'll put the clamp ring in. We've got some screws to put through that. No idea how that's going to turn out. So we'll show you that momentarily. Just to give you a little bit of a teaser though, before we jump into the other stuff. We also wanted to make a little bit of progress with the potential roof deck. The roof deck itself is something that we've discussed for a long time, the positives and negatives of it. Uh, we'll go into that a little more in depth in another video, but part of what we were working on today is putting up the supports to see whether it was really something that we're going to do or not. Kind of had to see the process for putting the supports up, which in my opinion is the hardest part of it. So I'm going to show you what went into fabricating a few pieces for the roof deck. And based off of how that went today, I think we're going to go ahead and move forward with it, which is why we're showing you. So we fabricated these pieces here. It's just a piece of one and three quarter coal roll steel. And we've got these grade eight, five inch long bolts. They're yellow because of the zinc coating on them. So grade eight is just the essentially the tensile force that it's rated to. It's basically a very strong hardened bolt and it is the highest grade that we felt we needed. So I think they have a structural grade bolts and all that. Not gonna go into all of it. Grade eight is a very, um, very strong bolt. So you can tell because it has the six dashes on the head of the bolt. Fun fact, if you didn't know, some of them have just a little eight uh, which they will circle. We also have these grade eight extra thick washers, which are coated with zinc, giving them that yellow uh, tinge, I guess, the yellow color. So we have one washer on either side so that the head of the bolt gets a washer. The washer in the middle is going to keep this support off of the wall of the bus. So the wall of the bus is going to go right here. So this gives us a little bit of a gap, and this will obviously stick up above the roof line so that we have a support to build off of later down the line. We just put a little 45 degree angle uh, at the bottom. It's just... Uh